this short color grading breakdown video, I will demonstrate how I graded my recent short film. This tutorial is intended for intermediate users, but feel free to incorporate your own techniques as you follow along. We are aiming for a darkest academia style with a rainy day aesthetic, focusing on deep green and blue tones. Please note that we will be using a third party LUT while building this look. You can find some useful links in the description, which we will reference when setting up color management and finalizing the look development. We've selected four shots to grade, each filmed in the S-Log3 color profile. First, we'll configure the color management settings. For a detailed explanation, refer to the color management setup link in the blog post. Here's a simplified overview of the process. Go to Settings, then Open Color Management. Under Color Science, select DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. Instead of using Automatic Color Management, choose Custom for the Color Processing Mode. Next, under Input Color Space, select the camera color space you used to film. In this example, S Gamut 3 Assign slash S Log 3. For Timeline Color Space, select DaVinci Wide Gamut to accommodate a wide range of colors. Since we're not limiting our dynamic range, set Timeline Working Luminance to 10,000 nits the maximum. For the output color space, pick the option that matches your calibrated display. In this case, we use Rec.709 Gamma 2.4. However, if you're using a standard office monitor, Gamma 2.2 might be more appropriate. Under Input DRT, select None. For Output DRT, you can use either Luminance Mapping or Saturation Preserving. We'll choose Luminance Mapping here. Finally, Set LUT interpolation method to tetrahedral and enable the Make Broadcast Safe checkbox. Once these settings are configured, you're ready to begin grading. Go to the Color tab and add a few serial nodes. The first node will be dedicated to noise reduction. Since there's a small amount of digital noise present, We'll remove it using the Noise Reduction tab. Note that this feature is available only in the studio version. Set the spatial threshold to 5. Change the spatial NR mode from faster to better. Because noise reduction can be taxing on system resources, feel free to disable it if necessary while editing. Finally, if your footage becomes too soft from noise reduction, add a sharpening node at the end of your node tree to restore detail. After noise reduction, we'll adjust the exposure of the image using the waveform monitor as our guide. Since the HDR color wheels are color space aware, we'll use them for exposure control. Experiment with the global light, highlights, and shadows controls to achieve your desired look, keeping an eye on the waveform to monitor your brightness levels. Whether you choose to crush your blacks is entirely up to you and depends on your creative vision. Next, we'll balance our footage to address the slight green cast. A common issue with Sony cameras when not white balanced properly using a grey card. I personally prefer using the offset wheel in the primary color bars, but you can also employ other methods such as temp and tint adjustments or the traditional lift, gamma and gain wheels. There are many possible approaches and the RGB Parade is especially useful for monitoring color balance during this step. Throughout the video, we will revisit earlier nodes and adjust their settings as needed. Next, we'll add saturation by switching our sat node to the HSL color space, though HSV is also an option. I'll uncheck channels 1 and 2, then increase the gain for a lightness-based approach to saturation. For some clarity, in HSR, dark or bright areas near 0% or 100% lightness receive less saturation, resulting in more subtle shifts and smoother transitions in midtones. And in HFV, bright, high-value areas can become quickly saturated, and dark areas stay relatively desaturated, yielding a more punchy effect, especially in highlights. I've found HSV can be harsher on reds, so I prefer HSL in this case. Feel free to experiment with both methods to see which works best for your footage. Next, we'll apply a LUT for our base look. In this example, 
I'm using the Fear Street 1666 LUT from the Triune Color Horror LUT version 3 pack because it provides strong color separation. Remember, most LUTs include some contrast by default. If you prefer more direct control over contrast, right click the LUT node and change its compositing mode to color only. For this demonstration, however, we'll keep the default setting. Next, we'll refine the exposure and color temperature for additional balance. You could create a new node for this step, but I'll make these adjustments directly in the balance node. Next, we'll apply split toning, a powerful technique for enhancing color separation and achieving a more cinematic look. This involves adding different color casts to opposite ends of the tonal range for the most accurate results. Professionals use a gray card calibrated to the working color space to find the perfect midpoint. However, in this case, we'll take a more creative approach and fine tune the colors based on what looks best for our scene. The process is simple. Unlink the curves and add a midpoint to define highlights and shadows. Whatever color cast you introduce in the highlights, counter it in the shadows by retracting. Use the red, green, and blue curves to create the desired color balance and enable editable spline for finer control. Less is often more. If a red cast becomes too dominant, neutralize it with the green and blue curves. For better color separation, push a slight red cast in the highlights using the red curve. Then use the other curves to balance it so it doesn't overpower the image. Similarly, remove red from the shadows and add blue, adjusting with the green curve to fine-tune the blues effect. It's all about experimenting to find the perfect balance for your scene. As you can see on the vector scope, we've achieved nice color separation. If any colors appear too intense, adjust the saturation to keep the balance in check. The next step is straightforward. We'll add a vignette to subtly draw focus toward the subject. Additionally, you can use a gradient mask to shape the light and enhance the mood of the scene. Once the desired look is achieved, grab a still and apply it to the next image. From this point on, we'll revisit the nodes and make necessary adjustments, fine-tuning the split toning, exposure, and color balance to suit the new shot. Since this scene features a character, we need to pay special attention to skin tones and light shaping. We'll also refine the split toning and add a parallel node for final adjustments. Using the curves, we'll adjust the reds to reduce saturated areas. Then under Satvis's loom curve, we pull down on the right side. This helps fix oversaturation in highlights and enhances color separation by making saturated areas stand out against less saturated ones, keeping the effect subtle for a natural look. To shape the light, we'll add parallel nodes to refine brightness. Since this shot is too bright, we'll use the Magic Mask feature to separate the background from the subject. Simply select the subject and invert the mask, then reduce the brightness in the background.
we'll also create additional masks for the face and the table, brightening them slightly to direct focus. At this stage, we'll fine tune the skin tone. I personally adjust this in the balance node so the changes apply globally, ensuring consistency across the entire image. Finally, we'll add a gradient mask on the right side of the image to improve contrast and balance. With this, our final look is complete. For the next scene, we'll grab a still, apply the look, then revisit each node to make further refinements and readjust the masks as needed. With that, our grading is complete. If you enjoyed this video, show some love by liking and subscribing, and maybe we'll do more of these in the future. As always, check the description for useful resources and don't forget to watch the final result. And with that, I bid you farewell. Happy grading, and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.